From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. All right, thanks for joining us this morning. It is Thursday, November 30th. Let's get it started. Time is ticking, and it's not in our favor. Building pressure to get more hostages home as Israel and Hamas strike another deal to stop the fighting for now. And now, you know, if somebody messes with me, I will disable them. You don't want to mess with them. Some East Bay seniors are using an unexpected form of self-defense. I want to defend our values. And so I said anytime, any place, anywhere. To me, the debate about who, what state is governed better, Florida or California. It's Newsom versus DeSantis. The governor's going head to head tonight in person. But will it be a real debate or more insults? When you have a whole ice cube that looks like a honeycomb, it's just breathtaking. Are you an ice lover? If so, you're not alone. The traditional frozen water cubes keeping our drinks cold now have some competition. At what point is it ice and then maybe a smoothie? Because I was just looking at a cube that looked like there was no ice about it. It was just frozen water. Right. I mean, I like the thought of an infusion yeah. because at least there's something going on besides frozen water. But we digress. We'll be talking <laughs> about that later. I'm Ann Magovic. Nicole Zaloom is here, and we are ready to start off your Thursday. I know. Jessica, she is here with us as well. We don't have Gianna or Reed on the show today, but we do have some... Very nice weather today. Yeah. It's not like it was yesterday, Jessica, but what can we expect for today and the rest of the week? You know, at least on the roads this morning, it's gonna be a lot less hectic. We're not dealing with those crazy early morning showers like yesterday, but today we do have some gusty conditions and still a light chance of showers into this afternoon. Let's start off with this morning. If you're just about to head out the door within the next 15 minutes or so, and you live down in the Santa Clara Valley, this is pretty much what it's looking like outside your window right now. A live look from our Black Mountain Cam overlooking our beautiful Santa Clara Valley with upper 40s in the forecast right now. A brisk start this morning, but into this afternoon we go. We're actually going to be seeing about five degrees above average down near San Jose. Cooler conditions the more north we go, and that's actually the case right now, too. Cooler conditions all the way just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. 51 degrees all the way down to 41 degrees from San Francisco over into Nevada. So a cool start this morning, whether you live in the North Bay or even along our coastline, too. Speaking of San Francisco, here's a look at the Bay Bridge right now. Yesterday, we were wrapping up the rain totals just around this hour. We ended up getting close to about a half an inch of rain near San Francisco, about a quarter inch in areas like Half Moon Bay and Concord, and it wasn't that impressive of a storm down into the Santa Clara Valley, but we still have some more rain in the forecast for us today. How much? Well, not that much. We still have unsettled weather in the forecast for us. An area of low pressure kind of just hanging around, bringing in a little bit of moisture for us. Here's what it's looking like into the afternoon hours today. This is all the way into the 5 o'clock hour. So many of us getting off work, getting off school, no matter where you're going into that 5, 6 o'clock hour, you might need the windshield wipers for maybe 5, 10 minutes as this weak system moves its way to the south, giving us about a hundredth of an inch of showers in the forecast later today. Now match that with some gusty conditions too. We can see wind speeds anywhere up to around 25 30 miles per hour along our coastline. It gets a little bit breezy into the afternoon hours in our inland areas around 3 or 4 o'clock. I'll have more on that forecast and what you can expect for the rest of this week, heading into a beautiful weekend coming up in just a bit. For now, over to you, Nicole. All right, thank you, Jessica. Let's get you ready to head out the door this morning. Now, earlier, we reported on police activity affecting Caltrain services. That was at 4th and King Street in San Francisco. Luckily, police are on the scene, meaning Caltrain services are still shut down. So expect delays and seek alternative routes at this time. In the South Bay, we do have an accident that's blocking the right-hand shoulder on southbound I-680. That's just after the Auto Mall Parkway exit. Conditions are slow as they wait for emergency services services to help clear the road. Happening today, the first day that BART is no longer accepting paper tickets at its stations. The payment method had become a small portion of how people used BART leading up to the change. And it comes as leaders of the agency are trying to promote the improvements that riders should be seeing on BART. Sean Chitness is live this morning at the Millbrae BART station with more. Sean, good morning to you once again. Hey, Nicole, good morning. We're starting to see commuters get through the station for the start of their day. No real issues so far. Some final reminders, though, in case you didn't know that, yep, paper tickets no longer an option. They want to make sure that you are only using Clipper. If you come over to the gates here, you'll have another reminder. It flat out says that it is out of service. So just making sure people understand Clipper is the way to go. And this gate setup, by the way, is one of 
the older ones that they are looking forward to changing eventually. Part of the campaign that BART was out talking about with its leaders when they were joining folks during the Wednesday morning rush hour commute. It was both the general manager as well as the chief of police taking time to chat with folks uh, who were at that particular station to get their feedback in and see what they had on their minds. Writers saying that they really appreciated the chance to talk to them directly and felt that it was a sign that those two leaders do want to improve the system. They welcome this new gate change that we've been discussing, as well as having different staff at stations and on trains to respond to incidents with ambassadors and crisis intervention specialists. That's in addition to uniformed police officers who will be there. Leaders wanted to discuss a variety of changes, including safety as well as how service is going and the cleanliness of stations. They heard about changes passengers are interested in, including how they transfer to eBART, as well as the need to promote more of the options offered when someone wants a response to an incident either at a station or on a train. It feels like it's very reactive right now, and I think a positive change that I would like to see is a more proactive approach instead of maybe first, like riders having to be the ones to identify the time. From a delivery standpoint, it's an early works project. We had always planned to phase out paper tickets. New fare gates, no paper tickets. So, it, you know, it's the natural progression of, of keeping our world class. And so that new fare gate that will be taller and be a more secure option, the first one will be at the West Oakland station by the end of this year. The goal is to have all BART stations with that gate by 2025, and then more options coming for the way that you pay using Clipper in 2024 next year. You'll be able to use your credit card and debit card, as well as link that through Apple Pay and Google Pay. Nicole, back to you. All right, looking forward to the improvements, Sean. Thank you. All right, 7.07 now, and uh, back to that breaking news that we've been following out of San Francisco right now, an incident at the Cal train station. Uh, we got some new video into our newsroom. Basically, what appears to be a man clinging uh, to what is a power pole from what we can see there. This is all happening at the Cal train station on 4th and King Streets in San Francisco. The incident first reported about an hour and a half ago, and at that point they said Cal train service into and out of the station in San Francisco was being affected. So police have been on scene for about an hour, but the trains are still being impacted. So we're going to keep a close eye on this, knowing that uh, this could have an effect on the rest of the morning commute if people can't use Caltrain. Of course, they'll be dribbling onto uh, some of the other commuting services, uh, BART, and uh, people hitting the roads as well. So Keep you posted on that. Meantime, in international news minutes, before Israel and Hamas's temporary truce was set to end, the two sides agreed to extend their agreement by another day. Today, now marking the seventh day of the ceasefire, with more Israeli hostages and Palestinian prisoners expected to be released later on. This morning, President Biden says 16 more hostages are going home today, including one American citizen. And there is a chance more can be freed in the coming days. The pause has also allowed for much-needed aid, trucks carrying food, medical aid, and other fuels to enter Gaza. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, three people are dead and more are injured after a shooting took place this morning. Police say two Palestinian gunmen opened fire on a bus stop during morning rush hour. Those men were then stopped and shot and killed by off-duty soldiers. Now back here in the Bay Area, hundreds of pro-Palestinian demonstrators rallying in front of the Black Rock building in San Francisco. Yesterday, they say they were specifically protesting the massive investment firm's ties to Israel. Nima Momeni, the man accused of stabbing and killing Cash App founder Bob Lee, is due back in court today. The judge in that case hoping to set a trial date during today's proceeding. Momeni last appeared in court in October. During those proceedings, his defense team moved to have a number of his electronic devices released by police. They could hold communication between Momeni and Lee leading up to the fatal, fatal stabbing. Prosecutors say Momeni stabbed Lee three times in April after a disagreement in the Millennium Tower the night before. And former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger 
died yesterday at his home in Connecticut. Kissinger played a major role in shaping U.S. foreign policy for several decades. He was Richard Nixon's national security advisor and then secretary of state under Presidents Nixon and Ford, playing a key role in reopening America to China and earning a Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating a ceasefire in the Vietnam War. He was 100 years old. Embattled Republican Representative George Santos spoke out this morning on the steps of Capitol Hill. He remained defiant and is refusing to resign, but tomorrow Congress set to vote on whether or not to expel him. The New York politician already facing criminal corruption charges and now new accusations that he misspent campaign money and could result in even more legal trouble. And California Governor Gavin Newsom and Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis taking center stage today. The two governors facing off in a nationally televised debate. The pair is going to discuss their different approaches to running their states, as well as topics like the economy, immigration, and crime. I'm looking forward to that. That all kicks off at 6 p.m. The art of self-defense is a great tool to stop would-be attackers, and it's a tool being used by this group of East Bay seniors, learning to defend themselves by any means necessary. And they say they have to because of stats like this. More than 16,000 seniors in California were victims of a violent crime in 2022. The majority of them robberies and aggravated assaults. That's a 150% increase since 2000. And here's the sad truth. All of the videos that you see playing behind me here, they're elderly people being attacked in the open, all of them here in the Bay Area. And it wasn't hard for our team to dig these videos up. But as Ryan Yamamoto shows us, some East Bay seniors refuse to become victims, and their weapon of choice is something that they already have on them every day. Don't let the slow stride and the wooden cane fool you. I feel much more empowered. Because at nearly eight decades old... 77 years old. John Dexheimer is ready to defend himself with what he calls his medical device. It is a tool for self-defense. And wood, because wood canes are the best, wood canes seek bone. It's a journey that began 20 years ago when a brain injury left John Week on his left side. I was actually walking with a cane and I saw an advertisement uh, in a paper that there was a master teaching self-defense using the cane. So I decided I'd go check it out. Today, anybody can use a cane. He is Master Dexheimer. This end is called the butt where he hopes to empower fellow seniors from becoming victims of a crime. If you're elderly and you're walking with a cane, then you're an easy target. One of his star pupils is 87-year-old Claudia Correa, who says she used to be shy and a bit timid. I was always aware and really uncomfortable because I always felt like I would be a victim. But today, she showed me what would happen if she ever got attacked. I like the groin strike. Oof. And I also like a combination of the groin strike. Uh oh. You fell over. We just lost Bob. <laughs> you guys get to pick him up. And now, you know, if somebody messes with me, I will disable them. Stop. Leave me alone. And the class is not just about using the cane. Students Stop. are taught Stop. to use Stop. their voice. You use that same kind of voice with somebody who's coming at you. It makes them sit up and pay attention. So next time you see someone walking a little slow and with a cane, don't be fooled. Because in the end, it may be the would-be attacker who looks like the dummy. Good thing that Ryan kept his distance on that one. Well, right now, Master <laughs> Dexheimer has eight students in Antioch and Oakley, and he plans on starting a third class in Dublin early next year.